Hello everyone, welcome again. In this section, we are just going to now unleash what UML is. Now we have seen the software development life cycle. We have seen to do a quality end product. We have to follow through certain steps. And then we have also discussed what kind of diagrams will be coming associated with UML. But what UML is, is the basic thing which we need to understand is it is a standardized modeling language used primarily for the software engineering process. So the software development life cycle, whatever we have seen, it will be used there. And what does it provides? It provides a set of graphical notation and techniques to create the visual models of the software intensive systems. Okay. Now, if you go through the breakdown of unified part of it what does unified means it's a consolidated language derived from the various modeling methods okay and what is a modeling then if you see the modeling part so in uml m is the modeling part now what is modeling it is about creating a representation or you create a blueprint like an architectural blueprint of something before you build it actually so as i said you you are creating a system a and then even before that system could be created you have to create a blueprint of that system to create that blueprint modeling part will be very important and what is the language l part of it language is it's a standard language with its own syntax and rules and semantics semantics meaning it's a meaning to represent a complex system. So if you want to represent a very complex system, you also can do that via UML. Now, if you go by the definition, it's a visual language. It's a visual language. And when I say visual, how it is helping? It's helping in visualizing the design of the system. It's easier to understand a complex system when you see diagrams rather than reading through a lengthy description isn't it and if you also see when when you are doing a definition basically you are writing a specification so through uml you will be able to provide a precise way to specify the requirement for the software system okay for the software system so that's why the software modeling is what you will be doing in the UML part. So you will be doing that in UML side of it. Now, what are the components? Now the components, as I said you, you should have some tools to design that. All components cannot be same. If you draw a class diagram, you are representing the system. What kind of object oriented classes will be there inside your system building or the architecture blueprint right then you are telling how those classes will go and fall in places so say for example there is a class x then class z class y or something like that now in the sequence you will be talking in what sequence start from a start point you will be going through it so basically what i am saying is you will be going to the next step through the sequence diagram even you can draw a use case diagram to say who will be the user of the system and then you are basically breaking this into the simpler units so the system can be understood even before it is built so there are many types of uml diagrams the diagrams are structured as structural diagram and behavioral diagram i will shortly talk about those in few more sections and if you then start looking into the benefit what it provides in the software design hope you agree that you will be able to clearly communicate with whom with the developers with all the stakeholders when i say with all the stakeholders it starts from developer to team lead to all the uh, project managers from project managers to the client project manager from client project manager 
to the client CIO, to client CIO, to the CEO, and all all the stakeholders, whoever opens the software designs, will be able to see that. So it is a clear communication what you are building, and there is no gap between that. The second one is improved planning with whether you do agile or not, whether you start breaking the components of your systems and building it from scratch doesn't matter but if you have a plan in place when you start identifying components when you start identifying how you are going to map different interactions between different system then you start drawing UML diagrams again once you draw those diagrams you are able to communicate to all the stakeholders whoever is involved in this right then it is also possible for an easier maintenance so a person who is working on this system if they leave the uh, for, from the organization tomorrow if somebody else joins comes and sits if you opens up that design document say for example this design document if you opens up he will be able to see again the same modeling what was done few years back so that is very very easy for maintenance if you do a clear UML diagrams in all your phases of the software development life cycle. So it will help you for quick problem identification. It will also help you for simplified debugging. And then the use cases what you derive is the system architecture, the database design or workflow optimization. So there are multiple benefits of this and eventually you will come to know once you finish this particular course. Let's move to the next section.